This is lab 15, um, where we're talking about principal components analysis. And this is associated with lecture 15, where we're also talking about principal components analysis. So for our PCA um, uh, examples here, we're going to work with um, a data set. And the data set we're going to work with, let's see if I can guess where this is, is um, a data set called Pokemon. And uh, this data set contains information from one of the Pokemon games about all the Pokemans. Um, and if uh, you're saying to yourself, why are we looking at Pokemon? Um, why not look at Pokemon? I'm not really sure what you've been doing with your life otherwise. But it's, you know, it's just an example data set, something different to shake it up. It has um, information on the attributes of these Pokemans um, for, uh, uh, as codified by the game. And um, so let's just look at, say, what the column names. Um, so they're kind of attributes against various types um, as their Japanese name or their English name, which probably would be good. Um, for example, and um, we can do some PCA on this data set. This is a, um, a pretty large data set, has about eight, 801 um, Pokemon and about uh, 41 variables here. So PCA, at least for now, and um, hopefully later we're going to be able to talk about some more advanced versions of PCA, but for now, we need to deal with numeric data. Um, and so we're going to need to subset this to numeric um, columns, because some of these columns here are, um, are more complicated and like have words in them. And so we can't, at this point, we don't know how to do, do anything with that. So if I have a column, say, uh, Pokemon 1, which is my first column, um, and I say, is that numeric? That's false, so that's not good. Um, so I'm going to basically want to check um, not only are the, um, are the elements of the column numeric, but they're all finite. We're not missing any values. Because again, at this point, um, we don't have a way of dealing with any kind of missing values for PCA. And uh, frankly, there really isn't a well-known, um, in fact, I've written some papers on, on how to how to deal with missing values for PCA. But basically what we're going to do is um, we're going to figure out um, which of these columns are numeric, or we're just going to subset to them. So this is a horrible piece of code. I apologize for it. It's really dense, but I'm just going to um, figure out. I'm just going to look over all of the columns here, and I'm going to apply my function that's going to return to me and tell me if they're numeric or not. So um, just creating this variable, which is numeric, which will tell me for my columns, which of them are numeric. And I think um, in total, I have 31 that are numeric, and I'm just going to subset my data to those columns that are numeric. Okay, so now if I look at my, my new data set, Poke, um, it's just going to have numeric variables. And so this is going to be um, accessible for PCA. So um, method one is there's a method called PR comp in the mass package. Um, so if we load up that mass package, um, there is a method called PR, PR comp, which will um, do principal components analysis. And um, a couple things to pay attention to, there's a variable called center, um, which was zero center of the variables, which is kind of the classic way to do PCA. There's also a variable called scale, um, whether or not we want to z not only center things, but z-score them by, this, by the standard deviations. Um, and generally speaking, that can be a reasonable thing to do. Um, the reason you might want to scale is if our variables are in different scales, um, we might, um, we might, uh, the, the might be more interpretable or give us, um, well, we can, we can do it both ways. We'll see why 
you might want to scale the variables. So let's first just look at it naively. Um, so let's say pc.out PR comp and what do I pass to it? Let's let's just pass our data. So X is our data matrix and um, center, I believe. Let's see, it says centered. Um, I guess is it's by default true. Yeah, so by default it's true. Cool, cool, cool. So we'll say X is my Poké data set, and uh, let's just, we'll specifically um, center it. So that runs PCA, super, super quick to run. It gives me um, what we call the standard deviations, which are the variances that we'd maximized for our principal components analysis. And it gives us a so-called rotation matrix, which is basically the weight matrix. Notice it's 31 by 31. Um, Okay, and um, probably tells us some other things. We can use this to calculate, um, to look at a couple things. Um, what do we want to look at? We could look at the weight matrix. Sure, so W is PC out dot rotation. So it's called a rotation matrix. In some ways, you can view this operation as rotating the space, or similar to comp projecting the space. And um, it's W matrix 31 by 31. I can look at, say, the elements of it. Let's look at the first, say, five columns. And it tells me the weights, right? So my first component, if I look down at these weights, Um, is, there, is it too interesting? Is it interesting? Is it interesting? Nothing too interesting. Maybe I could plot this. Let's see what happens if I plot it. So you see all the weights are very close to zero, but one of these is huge. One of these is very close to negative one. Now this is a unit vector, right? The W has to be a unit vector. And this thing is very close to negative one. So what's going on here? Um, this has to do with, so um, let's just see which, base happiness. So <clears throat> if I look at my data set, um, that's the values for my base happiness whatever that means. Um, or let's just go scroll back up to our original data set. One of the issues that we're running into here is that all of these variables are in very different scales. So look at some of these other ones are in like 0 0.05, 0 0.5, 2, 1, the very low values. But then we have some of these, um, like this experience growth and some of these other things, which I guess is all the same. Um, but this base happiness, some of these things are in much, much, much different scales. And so the problem is if I try to maximize the linear, the variance of the linear combination of these, it's going to be kind of weighted towards things that have very large scales. Um, and that's not great, um, because that's not necessarily the most interesting thing. And so what we might want to do instead, because otherwise our analysis is just going to really you know, our first component is basically zero for everything, and it's just basically recapitulating um, this base happiness score, um, which is maybe not that interesting. What we instead could do is we could we could scale our variables. So PC out, we can say PR comp, and we'll pass it again our data. But not only will we center the data, but we'll scale it. And that's going to stop because basically what this weighting is saying is that it's basically putting a weight of one on this on this one variable and zero on everything else. And so that's not really kind of summarizing our data in any kind of interesting way. It's just picking out the variable with the highest, um, with the kind of largest scale. So if we scale them, if we divide through by the standard deviations, we will hopefully get something that's a little more interesting going on. Um, so let's again say 
get our weight matrix or our rotation matrix. And now, if we plot W1, now we get things that are kind of more commensurate because we've scaled everything to be on kind of the same scale. And so these, this is more interesting. It's not like it's the, the weighting is just choosing one of the variables because that variable happens to have a large scale. Um, you can see this if, um, let's see, what, what, what is my, um, if I do box plots, so you see all, if I do box plots of all of these, right, all of them are really slow scales, but this one over here um, is a huge scale. And I don't think that's base happiness, but um, which one is it? Let's see. Um, yeah, it says experience growth. Okay, which makes sense given what we looked at based at the top there. I'm not sure why this particularly choosing 24, why this W was 21. That's a, it's a bit strange to me, but in any case, the, the issue holds. You see how way different scales all these things are on. So scaling actually, actually really matters. Okay. So one thing you can look at is these weights. Um, the other thing you can look at is how much variance is captured by the various principal components. Um, so uh, PR, uh, let's say PC dot out um, SDEV is the standard deviation. So as I square that, that is the variances. And I can, of course, plot my variances. So um, first component captures a variance of about five, the second one about three, right? They have decreasing variances. We, you know, the first one maximize the variance, the second one maximize the variance subject to its orthogonal or uncorrelated with the first one, etc. Another interesting way to do this is to plot the variance divided by the sum of the variance. So this is kind of the percentage of the variances here. So the first one captures about 15% of the data, of the variance of data is captured by the first component. Of, of, you know, of something over 10 is with the second. And so you can see as we go further and further out in our components, they capture less and less percentage of the variance in the data and become less important. So the idea is that I could truncate this at some point and retain, I don't know, the first top five. And um, if I plot the cumulative sum here, let's do this. If I plot the cumulative sum here, this doesn't give me an issue. Oh, I don't need another plot in there, right? It looks like after, I don't know, somewhere around 10 of these, so I'm getting about 80% of the variance in my data capture. So I can, instead of working with 30 variables, I could work with, I don't know, 10, and I'm going to capture something around 60, 70% of the kind of interestingness in my data. Um, and so that's what people will do is they will, um, they will just truncate. They will just say, well, I'm just going to, you know, use the first couple of these. So I can calculate Z, right? Z is my X matrix times my weights. And if I only want to retain, say, the first I don't know, 10 of these, I just pull up the first 10 columns. Of course, that's not going to work, is it? Um, I think this needs to be a matrix. There we go. And um, these are my principal components, PC1, 2, 3, etc., etc. And um, so that's kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> You can get kind of similar information about the variances of these things if I print my um, thing out, because eventually somewhere down here, I thought it gave this information. Oh, you know, I need to do summary. If I look at the summary, I was wondering what's going on here. Summary kind of tells me the standard, the standard deviation, the, the proportion of variance and the cumulative portion. So the first one captures 16%. You know, if I include the first 10, that's in getting about 75% of my variance um, cumulatively. Um, and so using, say, the first 10 of these, these first 10 PCs capture about 75% about of my variance. And I've gone from 31 variables down to 10, so a third the number of variables. And I've captured the majority, the vast majority, say, about 75% of my variability, which you can see from this plot here. 
at about 10, it's somewhere it's about 0.75 or so. The other thing that PCA is often used for is visualization. So basically it finds the best um, n-dimensional representation of your data. And um, so I could plot, um, I could plot, say, um, oh, you know what I need to do when I calculate z here? I have to be a little careful here. I'm wondering, wondering why this looks a bit. Um, let's say x, we actually have to scale this thing. Um, the reason is when we principal components analysis scaled that thing too. And so um, that W matrix assumes that, that X is, um, is scaled. If we don't scale now, okay, these look more like reasonable values. I was wondering why those values are so big, right? So internally PCA calculates these W assuming that the matrix of the scale. So all I'm just doing is, is, is centering my columns and rescaling them by the standard deviation. And um, that will give me my Z. Okay, those are more reasonable values. Okay, now what I can do is I can plot, right? So if I want to take my 31 dimensional data and I want to plot the best two dimensional version of it, the kind of best projection of the data into two dimensions, that is just the first two columns. By the metric of variance is interestingness, this is the kind of two-dimensional subspace, this planar cut of my data um, that um, best captures my data. It's PC1 against PC2. You could, of course, plot other pairwise things. You could plot um, PC2 against PC3, you get something like that. Um, and so PCA can be used for visualization purposes, and it's often, often really used for visualization there um, because it helps... I can't visualize a 31 dimensional space, but if I project it down into two dimensions, it's not a perfect representation of my data, but my table here, I capture about 27 or so percentage of the variance cumulatively of the interestingness of my data. Um, and um, so it does a, it's, you know, it's about lose two thirds of the data, but you have a two dimensional. So there's a trade off, trade off to be made there. The last thing I want to show is that I claimed that. Um, Method two was the SVD. And I claimed that we could do this with the SVD, right? And so X was our rescaled version of this numeric data set. And my claim is that if I calculate the SVD of this thing, it gives me the same information. So I just run the SVD on that. And um, let's say W2 is my second version of this weight thing. I claimed that this is the V matrix, or in our case, we want the first 10 of these. And um, so I can create Z a second way, let's call it Z2, would be X by W2. And um, they are exactly the same, right? If I plot first two, we get exactly the same picture. So this is literally behind the scenes, all that that PR comp is doing. And then some other calculations of vario, calculate the cumulative variance and things like that. It's literally just calling the SVD. And that's all, that's exactly all it's doing. The, um, and you can note that, say, the variances um, will be the square of um, square of my singular values. Uh, they'll need to be rescaled in some way. Um, probably divide by number of rows of x. Yep, and I get exactly my variances, pretty much exactly my variances. So the diagonal elements of that D matrix tell me the variances, and the weights tell me uh, the V matrix tells me the weights. Um, so this is exactly how it's doing behind the scenes. Frankly, this is when I do SVD, I always hand calculate it this way because I'm weird like that. But there is this other function, PR comp. Um, and, and PCA is probably one of the most widely used, probably one of the most useful things in this class. It has vast applications for this kind of visualization of things um, and many, many, many other applications because it is basically just the SVD 
a renaming of the SVD of the matrix. Um, that has some kind of nice interpretations of maximizing variance or finding the subspace that maximizes variance. Um, so we'll stop there. That's a nice quick little tour of S the SVD.